common question is how can I enable dynamic pop-ups using Elemental's loop grid? And I did something previously that allowed you to open other pop-ups. But this time I'm going to show you a way of how imagine you've got like a team section and you've gone and got some custom field information present. If I now click this, it's going to open up kind of like a pop-up about Sally Ann Hawkins. You get some details, Laura Mipsum and the years employed. I can close it. I can go to Jennifer. Look, her details, different text, different years employed. We go to Jack the dog. We get this as well. This is all done in a dynamic way without using pop-ups. There is a bit of like JavaScript code to stick in a HTML widget. And there are a few steps you must follow to get it to kind of look this way. And you don't have to copy this at all. Just look at the steps and then modify it to work for you. But the steps are kind of the same regardless of how you do it. I'm going to show you how to do this right now. And by the way, I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you love all we're doing with regards to WordPress and Elementor tutorials and helping you with your business. Go and check out our business packs that you can go and get for $1. And we have some free stuff too. Anyway. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow. Let me now show you how this was built. It was actually done by using some custom fields to help create some of the content that you see over here. So let's just go back a step, okay? Before we enter the loop grid, let's go to the advanced custom fields plugin. Well, in actual fact, there was a custom post type as well, which is over here. So using the ACF plugin that you can get for free, we created a custom post type called team. And this is where all of our entries would sit. Inside of here, though, or for the team post type, we had to go and add in some fields. If I go to team fields, this is what we did. Description, team role, and years employed. Now, within the custom post type, we already had the title featured image as well. But here were the extra fields we added. Now, if I go over, oh, by the way, you can see them here. Description, team role was text, and years employed was just a number field. So if you're okay with the ACF plugin, this should all be crystal clear and we have got other videos where we go over ACF in a bit more detail. If we go over to team, I went and added in three entries. Let's just go to Jack the dog. So I only showed the title field and the featured image that you can see here. And then we have the three custom fields kick in. I didn't need category fields. I didn't need like massive editor fields. I wanted to keep it quite succinct. There's our description. There's the team role foot warmer for the dog or Jack the dog. And years employed, we have four. So I added in three different entries. Okay. Now we're going to go over to a page where we're going to look at the loop grid. The loop grid is looking up posts. We're only showing three because we only have three at the moment. And if we go to query, you'll see here the source is team. Sometimes if you go and stick post, because that's the only option you're going to have over here, post products or the taxonomy field. If you have not gone and changed this to be your actual post type, if you're using the traditional WordPress, you might be on WordPress post. If you've created a custom post type called team, go and do team. Now, I do recommend that if you are ever going to imitate this, do it in a custom post type, especially if you've got loads of custom fields that are now relevant for that particular post type. I strongly recommend you do that because it keeps things tidier and doesn't get complicated or convoluted with your normal WordPress posts. Or maybe you're not doing WordPress posts, but who am I to tell you? So let's now go and edit the template for this. We have a parent container and inside of here we have the post title, we have the text editor, and this is using a advanced custom field, which is the team role. Let me show you how you would do that in case you're not sure, because it's kind of replicated throughout. We dropped in a text editor field. You go and hit the dynamic tag. You scroll down until you get to ACF field. You hit the spanner or the wrench. And then I went and picked, uh, what was it? Team role, that was it. So you can see I would have done it for description and then I would have done it for years experience. Then we've gone and added in the image, which is the featured image. You could use the widget, which is featured image. I, from force of habit, actually like to drop in an image widget. And then again, I would go over to the dynamic tag and I go and pick featured image. Why? Because I just find that I like to work with raw widgets rather than ones that have been defined for us by someone else. And then I go on and set some width and height. And look, you know, this is basic elemental right now. Then we've added in a button. And this is the bit that now links into how we're going to dynamically summon the other information. You'll notice here I've got the text show bio. That's my cat's tail, by the way, that just kind of wandered across my face. Um, so we've got a show bio and in the advanced tab, I've also given it a class name of button underscore style. This is important. And you'll see why later on, because we are going to enable this to have the pointer event. 
but I've given it a class name of button style. In the content tab, this is really, really important. What I've done is click the dynamic tag and I've selected post ID. This is really, really, really important. And when you click the spanner or the wrench in the before field, you want to add in button like this. We then have some HTML over here, and this is where we're going to drop in a bit of script. Now, some of this script won't make sense until we go to this child container. And this child container is actually the bit that contains everything that's going to be exposed or revealed when you click the button. But I do just want to point out that over here we have button underscore style, the class for the button. And this is where we've said the pointer event or is auto when the cursor is a pointer. Otherwise, if you don't have this, when you are viewing this on live, you won't have the finger. You'll just have a normal like a uh, cursor line or the straight line. And it doesn't really tell you that this is a clickable event, even though it kind of says show bio. So you want to make it crystal clear. Now, what you have down here, and I'm not going to go through this, OK? If you follow through what I'm doing and you use a similar um, IDs as to what I'm telling you, this will work. The idea is, is that when you click that button, it takes the post ID and then it's going to bring or reveal to you further content and everything is linked back to the post ID. So when it goes and gives you the description, uh, the years of experience, because they were the other two custom fields, they are linked to the dynamic details tags of the post for Jack the dog. So this is going to basically control everything from that point of view. But when you click it, it needs to now present it to you. And that's why we have a child container. Now you will notice this child container has a sub child container as well. And one of the drawbacks, and, and I, I feel that this is something that is a bit of a compromise, but it's not a showstopper at all, is that once you've got this HTML activated, you're not really going to see the containers unless you go and remove their HTML. So I'm going to do that. And when I now refresh the page, because that HTML is removed, you're now going to see what was sat within the child container. So I would recommend that you kind of build this out and then you go and add in the HTML. But you do have to play around with it a little bit. Let me now just explain how this is all working. So we have a child container. This child container, all it does is just like justify and align the items. So I wanted to create like a background overlay. Now, there are other ways you can do this. And someone called John in the Web Squadron Facebook group did post some other code whereby you probably wouldn't have to do it this way. But the reason I'm showing you this is because you have like full on control over what you're building because you may want to add in a particular background image and you might want to do a bit of gradient or you might want to do other stuff. And I'm sorry if I'm talking too much because I just want to get across that this is actually easier than it looks if you just build it in a methodical way. So the child container, so Flexbox, 100% uh, width, and I've set the height to be 100 VH, and I've justified and centered in the middle. The reason I've done that is that when you present it, it basically fills up the screen. If you go over to the style tab, you will see I've got a dark color. Well, I've gone for black, and I've not, I've made it a little bit transparent so that if when it appears, if there's other content on the page, you get that background overlay. And this is why I'm saying if you wanted to go and add in other content, even a video in the background, be my guest. It's entirely up to you if you want to do another background overlay. Uh, when you go to the advanced tab, I have added in some padding of 20% on the left and right. So as you can see here, you've got 20% kicking in to keep it away from the edges. Now, here's the important bit. Normally, it's going to be set to be default for the container. I've instead set it to be fixed. So I'm basically saying, I don't care where you click, this is going to be fixed on the screen. Uh, the horizontal orientation, uh, when you click this, it doesn't always position it. What you want to do is just click left or right and put it back to left and then click offset zero and do the same for the vertical. Just go top, bottom, top and put it back to zero. It, I can't explain why, but sometimes you put in zero and it doesn't position it. But by ensuring that you hit fix and you've got it set to this with zero, zero, that is now going to be fixed, as I showed you earlier when I was clicking on the buttons. Now, uh, I have got a Z index of 999. That was just to ensure that it definitely does sit in front. Again, here is the other important bit about this container. Again, this is really, really important, okay? The button, post ID, the container. You go down to the CSS ID and again, you do the same thing, right? You go and click it and you pick post ID where you have the dynamic tag. 
you go to the spanner and wrench and this time you put container. I've kept it really, really simple here, okay? So for the button, it's just button. For the container, it's just container. If you want to change it, you can do. Just make sure you modify it within the HTML script that sits over here. Otherwise, it's just not going to follow through. And I've also gone and popped CSS class name container as well. Because if you go to the HTML over, oh, I removed it, didn't I? When I put it back, you're going to see that it ensures that anything that's got dot container or the container name is container as the CSS class, everything is kind of hidden out of view. So this container, you can see my settings are aligned in the center, fixed. And if we go to the layout, you can see that we've just center aligned it 100% in width and 100 VH in height. The second child container, oh, sorry, the sub child container for the child container, that is what you see here with the white bit, okay? So the ch child container, I always have to think about this. The child container is the overlay. The sub child container is now what you have here and I have a boxed width. Um, I didn't really have to go with, I mean, you can if you want, but I just left it as is because I've already modified my padding with the child container. It's a column, justified content. You can see the settings over there. Style, I've just got a white background. Advanced tab, I've added in a bit of padding and I added in a bit of margin as well. You can make this look how you want. I've just gone for really big lettering and weighting just to show you that it was bringing through the relevant items. Uh, inside of, and by the way, there is no ID or class name here. It was on the button and the child container. The sub child just contains items. So you don't need to add any ID in here. We have an icon though. This is the uh, plus sign. And if you go to the style, I've got it as a 45 degree so that it now looks like a cross. If we go to the advanced tab, I've gone and aligned it to the end. And I've also got a CSS class name of close hyphen icon. Why have I got a class name there? Because within the code, this also will pick up uh, that particular class and it will ensure that when you click it, it closes down the container. So that HTML JavaScript does do quite a bit. It's not a huge amount of code, but it does do quite a bit. And I think it's quite powerful for what it does. So again, button ID, container, child container, that one there, it's got an ID. And then inside of here, you just go and align your items. Position it and set it up how you want. I mean, we've got the post title again. I've again added in a team editor or the team role with a text editor. And then I've just gone and select the dynamic tag. And then over here, I've selected team role. Then I have another text editor. This time I've selected description. And over here, another text editor. Just do copies if you want. Um, and this time I've gone and added in years employed. You'll notice it's got years employed in bold. If you go to the advanced tab, I've got bold uh, syntax, years employed, and I've closed off the syntax. I've got a colon and a space as well. So if I was to go and modify that, it would change here as well. That's really, really simple. The building out, you know, you can make it look how you want. If you want to rearrange it, if you wanted to add the featured image in again, uh, any particular styling you could do. Let's now just go back over to the HTML and I'm going to drop back in my script. And as soon as I do that, everything closes down. And you can see over here, the child container, which was that one over there. Whoops, let's just go back to the code. You can see there it says display none for dot container. And further down here, you're going to see the bit with the close icon. And you can see here, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Over here for the container ID. This is where it has the word container which was the CSS ID plus the post ID. And over here, you've got the button ID where you got the word button and then it picks up the post ID as well. And that is basically it. I mean, I haven't built it out step by step because that would have taken longer and it was easier to build it and show you. So if I just hit save and back and we go to preview, I hit Jennifer and look, Nam Lacus name and we got years employed. You go to Jack, we get Sodalus. So that proves that it is working because there are other methods I've tried. And what it sometimes did was it kept bringing over Lorem Ipsum. It might change the name, but it always had Lorem Ipsum and it kept defaulting to years employed 14. By using the post ID, it returns the relevant detail. And we're not using pop-ups at all. And you might look at this and go, oh, but isn't that returning loads of information and the page size and all of that? 
you don't need to worry. It's because the containers by default are set to display none, it's not taking up any space and they're not visible either because you don't see them until you kind of do this. So if you had like a team section or you maybe had like a loop grid of posts, uh, maybe even products. I mean, can you imagine you had a loop grid of products and then you click it and now maybe the variation buttons appear or other details or more description or more images and then you got the add to cart. So you might give a snippet of a product or a post. Maybe your posts aren't that big, you know, and you don't and you're not really bothered by SEO and all of that. I mean, of course, you'll have a separate post page, but you want them to instantly read it because you want them to stay on that page. Maybe you're trying to convert them as part of a sales funnel to purchase a product. So you got like a testimonial and you got like an excerpt of the testimonial. But then you want to say, read the full testimonial, and then they go and click it, and they get loads more details. Could be a video playing and all of that. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. The link for the video, the link for the code is in the video description. Like, subscribe, share, and follow. I uh, love to read your comments. Any improvements? By the way, you know, this is just a tutorial based on something that someone asked in the Web Squadron Facebook group. And I took it as a bit of a challenge to find a way to do it. Someone else had a bit of code, but I've had this particular code that I'm actually using somewhere else for some other reason. I modified it to get it to work for this. I'm not an accessibility uh, expert. There's probably ways to improve and make this code even better. So please go ahead and have a go. Catch you later. See you soon. Bye. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings.